Hi, I am Mateusz and I'm happy to present you our result, the pitas for Steiner tree on map graphs. This is joint work with Jarek, Misum, Joachim and Sumerta. So in the Steiner tree problem we are given a graph and a set of terminals denoted here on this picture with squares. The goal is to find a tree connecting these squares uh, and we want to minimize the cost of this tree. We want to find the optimum solution. So the Steiner tree problem comes with many variants. So the most cl classical one is the edge-weighted Steiner tree, in which every edge has some cost. And now you want to find a tree uh, of minimum total edge weight. Another variant is the uh, node-weighted Steiner tree, in which uh, instead of cost on no edges, we are given costs, weights on nodes. And the goal is again the same. We want to connect uh, our terminals with a tree of minimum node weights. So the edge weighted tiny tree, for, for it, there is already a 1.39 approximation algorithm. This is currently best known approximation. For the node weighted standard tree, there is a log n approximation algorithm, which is essentially tight because uh, the set cover, uh, there's a reduction from set cover to node weighted standard tree. Um, we can con consider also the standard tree problem on planar graphs. The planar graphs are, are graphs that can be drawn on a plane without intersecting edges. And for edge weighted tiny tree on planar graphs, there is a PITAS. PITAS is basically a family of approximation algorithms uh, that allow for approximation arbitrarily close to one. Uh, and uh, for node weighted tiny tree problem, the best known approximation algorithm for planar graphs is 2.4 approximation algorithm. And the main open problem in this area is that is there a PITAS for planar node weighted tiny tree problem? And this is the problem that we tried to solve, um, however we failed. Mm. On the other hand, we are able to show a PITAS for a special case of the node-weighted Steiner tree problem on planar graph. The special case is that we have a bipartite graph with weights on the left zero, right, weights on the right, sorry, weights on the right zero, uh, weights on the left one, and the terminals are allowed to be only on the left side. And also, because the special case feels weird, as a corollary, we are able to show a bit for Steiner tree on uniform map graphs. Okay, so what are those map graphs? The map graph, um, to define a map graph, uh, imagine that you have a map. Actually, this is some real map. And uh, this vertex here is the Etna volcano, and this is the map of municipalities of Catania. Anyway, you take any map, which is a set of, connect of internally disjoint uh, connected regions um, on Euclidean plane, and for every region you create a vertex. So now you can consider any two neighboring vertices, neighboring meaning they share some border, and you could uh, add an edge between those two vertices. And if you do that for every pair of neighboring vertices, you will obtain a uh, planar graph, not yet map graph. So in fact, every planar graph can be constructed in such a way. So on the other hand, uh, map graphs, uh, okay, they are similarly constructed, but with a slight difference. You again can uh, create vertices, but now you connect two edges, two, two vertices with an edge if they share, if these regions uh, share at least one single vertex on the border. Uh, for example, this tip here, this Etna volcano. Um, okay, and if you add those edges here on this example, you will obtain this graph, and this is how you how map graphs can be defined. Uh, and one in interesting uh, distinctive property of map graphs is that they allow for arbitrarily large clicks. 
whereas for example planar graphs they allow only for clicks of size at most four. Okay, so we study this tiny tree problem on map graphs and it makes sense to study them only on uniform graphs where every edge has cost one because otherwise if you think of if, if you allow any edge weight then it turns out that this problem is as difficult as the tiny tree on general graphs. Okay, so the uniform case is still interesting because it captures a uh, planar edge weight tiny tree problem. Um, so this is indeed a generalization of planar graphs. Um, and also um, it is interesting because it then turns out that uh, map graphs, the tiny tree on map graphs, is a special case of node weighted tiny tree on planar graphs, the problem we were interested in in the first place. So um, to show this second observation, this is a reduction from map graphs to, to, to those planar bipartite 0 1 weighted graphs with terminals on the left and we call those in these instances uh, the map weighted instances because they come from the reduction from map graphs. How the reduction looks like? So take this graph, this graph has some underlying map and uh, keep only vertices, uh, vertices of this graph and add to the set of vertices those set of this set of uh, points, those tips, where at least three uh, regions met, meet. And now if you connect these tips with the uh, original vertices, you will obtain a planar graph. And uh, this is indeed the graph that uh, comes in this reduction. I observe that this is bipartite. On the right hand side we have those tips, red vertices, we assign echo zero. On the left hand side we have original vertices, you put a weight one of those of, on those vertices. And it turns out that every Steiner tree on, in the graph on the left can be mapped to this, any Steiner tree on the, to, to some corresponding Steiner tree on the map graph on the right, and vice versa. So this is a reduction. What we then show, we then show a pitas for the node weighted Steiner tree problem on those map weighted instances. Uh, and as a corollary, we have epitas for Steiner tree on uniform map graphs. Perfect. So uh, how we prove the theorem? We prove the theorem by giving this epitas for map weighted instances, and we do that by following the well-established framework for epitas on planar graphs. This framework has four steps uh, in those yellow boxes here. And the first step is the spanner construction, which is the most difficult. So Assume you have a spanner construction. Um, the spanner, what is the spanner? The spanner is a subgraph of your input graph such that it, have, uh, it has two properties. First property is that it is cheap. It is not more, not more expensive than a constant times optimum solution. And second, it approximately preserves the optimum solution in your input graph. So assume you have a spanner. Assume this is done, so say this is this graph is a spanner and then and um, its cost is some constant times opta. So what we can do then in this framework is that uh, there is a contraction decomposition lemma which gives you a decomposition of edges into set of edges with a property that well if you take any set of those edges, let's say you see the blue edges, and you contract all these edges, so contraction is the proce this procedure, where you, this is how you contract one edge, but you contract all the edges. When you contract all the edges, the contraction decomposition guarantees you that uh, the true diff of your contracted graph is constant. Great, and if the true diff is constant, then you can solve the Steiner tree problem on, this, uh, on those instances to optimality via dynamic programming. So if we do that, and then in this framework we have to contract back those edges, we expand those edges back so those blue edges you can see these, these are expanded here back and um, this is our final solution that we output. So now to analyze the cost of the solution, well the green part is 
uh, was computed optimally, but we have to bound the cost of the blue part. And uh, it turns out that it, it can be bounded by epsilon opt uh, if you take k uh, large enough in the contraction decomposition, but it is still a constant because we start with, with a span which was uh, cheap, which, of a, which was a constant factor times opt. So this is how it's done for planar uh, edge weighted Steiner tree problem. So this will not work directly for node weights. So one first idea would be to set the set of set the cost of edges to the sum of cost of nodes of the endpoints, uh, but and do everything as in the framework. However, this will not work due to the cost explosion. Uh, basically due to the high degree vertices. So we have to uh, derive something new. So our new thing is a new node weighted contraction decomposition. And our contraction decomposition, it has two properties. First, as before, the tree diff after contraction is constant. However, also additionally, for any set of vertices, for any, sorry, for any vertex v, all the incident edges of this vertex fall in at most two sets of this decomposition. We obtain this property and, uh, and a new node-weighted contraction decomposition. And with this contraction decomposition, we are able to show all the steps of those of this framework and they can be done to we, we, we they they work for arbitrary node weights so this is great however for spanner we couldn't uh, derive a spanner for arbitrary node weights we were able to do that only for map weighted instances and uh, there is not a lot of time to show you all the details of the spanner construction so so let me just give you some pictures and uh, small uh, to, to give you some flavor of things we have to deal with. So the spanner construction is that you start with a constant factor approximation, you cut it open and you make this gray face the outer face like that. And then you find a set of strips, uh, shortcuts, then in each strip you find the columns and then you find somehow supper columns and then uh, each such area is called a brick and for every big brick we add we, we, we find a set of portals and then for every subset of portals we compute an, on an optimum node weighted tiny tree and we add it to the span and this is the uh, basically the construction um, and we have to show that it is cheap and it preserves the op op approximately the optimum solution. And in order to do that, we have to derive our node weighted variant for the uh, uh, of the uh, structure theorem for bricks. And also, we have to be very careful about uh, these vertices that we call corner vertices, the vertices that lie uh, that are on boundary on, of multiple bricks. So, if you are interested in details, please take a look at the paper or drop me a question. Uh, okay, and the open problems are as follows. So, uh, the main open problem remains. Is there a PITAS for plane and node weighted tiny tree problem or the problem is APX hard? We don't know it. Uh, so, by our work, uh, it is already enough to show a spanner construction for plane and node weighted tiny tree problem. So, we can try doing that. Um, but maybe you, you, if you want to start start with some easy uh, easier case, then you maybe try want to try uh, checking the uh, trying the con to construct a spanner for map weighted instances, but with terminals on the right. Those instances we are we are not we were not able to uh, derive the spanner for such instances, and we think this will be. This would be interesting. Okay, and uh, I think that's all. Thank you very much, and uh, bye. Well, okay, thank you, Mateus, for your uh, presentation. Are there any questions, please? So I, I, I had one question, but I asked it on the chat, and Mateus answered me already. 
I just wanted to to get some pointer for for the paper. If I put a name on archive, uh, can I find it or? Yes, the, the full version is on archive, uh, and yeah, you should be able to find it. The name is the same. Uh, yeah. Okay, thanks. It was, it was very inter interesting okay. talk. Enjoy. Thank you. Thank you for your talk. Yes. Are there any questions, please? I don't think so. But okay, you can all uh, always ask Mateus. Uh, Find him around the conference. Someone uh, is in the podium. Gabriel? Do you want to ask him? Hello, good morning. Gabriel? Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Yeah, I have a question about the DP you said you use for the bounded width Steiner tree and how it works as a parametrized complexity on the width of the tree. Um. Um, okay, so so the no, the dynamic programming for the uh, node weighted Steiner tree on uh, bounded tree with graphs. Um, okay, so, so this is this is done by my cloud actually. <laughs> so so I I won't tell you all the details, but uh, but this was just the standard approach uh, similar to to, to the edge weighted. Uh, you have the DP4 edge weighted, and, and this is similar. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Any questions more? Okay, there's Tiago. There is a please, Tiago. Uh, so, first things for the nice talk, and my question is. For in the case of planar graphs, we clearly have this bounded maximum clique. So, but in the case of these map graphs, we kind of generalize that, right? We don't have more of this bounded clique. So, I want to know if there is a simple class of graphs which cannot be described as a map graph. Oh. <laughs> okay, so um, there are a lot of graphs that cannot be explained with map graphs, clearly. Um, but uh, it's hard to, 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 to give, give you examples straight away. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I would I would have to think about about something. <laughs> okay, okay, no problem. I, I, Don't I, think... I this one offline. Yeah. Okay, okay. Thanks for the talks. <laughs> so, thank you.